It's worship. You know, the Lord, this is, we just learned this song this morning. And I love it that, uh, that uh, Bill Easter is here. And the Lord put this in our hearts to do this song. And the, the words are so powerful. Let's all stand. It's a declaration. So it's, how many believe that mountains are still being moved? You know, this is, this is really cool. This is what the Lord showed me. All you need is something as small as a mustard seed to move an entire mountain. Now, now, how, now that's what the word says. It's a seed of faith. A seed as small as a mustard seed can move an entire mountain. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe, yes, we can see it, that wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. Let's, say, let's, let's, let's declare, let's say this together, okay? In one voice, ready? Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe, yes, we can see it, that wonders are still what you do. Together, mountains are still being moved. Let's say that together. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe, yes, we can see it, that wonders are still what you do. God is the same yesterday, he is the same today, and he is the same forever and ever and ever. Just give, begin to give a shout of praise that God, you are the same, you never change. You never change, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. Woo! And it goes to a little like this. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe, yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. Bodies. Bodies are still being raised. Oh, yes, they are. That one.
monster never burn out Make the fire on the altar never burn out Make me a house of prayer Sing in a church, come on. Sing, Lord, make me a house, make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer, Lord, make me a house, make me a
hidden under a large veil made of skins. God is looking to put his presence in skin. <laughs> God is looking to put his presence in skin, in you, in me. We are carriers of his presence. I want to carry your presence to the ends of the earth. Oh. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us with your presence. Fill us. Fill us, Lord. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us even now. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Jesus. Fill us now, fill us, fill us, Lord, fill us, fill us up. Fill us with the presence so we can give it out. Fill us it up, Lord, fill us up.
is not a human who lies or a mortal who changes his mind. When he says something, he will do it. When he makes a promise, he will fulfill it. Look, I am ordered to bless. When he blesses, I, what he blesses, I cannot reverse it. No one has seen guilt in Jacob or perceived perversity in Israel. Adonai, their God, is with them and acclaimed as king among them. God, who brought them out of Egypt, gives them the strength of a wild ox. Thus, one can't put a spell on Jacob. No magic will work against Israel. We are the grafted in. We are the grafted in. It can now be said of Jacob and Israel, what is this that God has done? Here is a people rising up like a lioness. Like a lion, he rears himself up. He will not lie down till he eats up the prey and drinks the blood of the slain. Wow. Wow. What I saw was a, a plateau and uh, uh, then it shifted like table rock so it's a flat place uh, and the Lord uh, was saying that he wants us to move into a plateau right now a place of resting time but a place of readiness and then he took me into uh, uh, the place where there's uh, the US commander he called it the us commander and it, it's a, a ship you know where the planes come in and they fly in on the ships and then they go out again uh, the destroyers and so he's also taken us there but he wants us on a flat plane right now a, a flat plane that's ready and willing to go when he says go but it's a plateau resting time in the meantime okay one more so yesterday we were in Lyman and we had a, a three and a half hour prophetic declaration time and and what, what I heard there was for the first time, I heard the sound of the, of the army of the, the bridal army marching. He said, your breakthrough is over. He said, it's time to arise and march. And so today I'm sitting here and I declare right now, today is the appointed time. Yes, we need a move, but we declare that we are your move. We don't wait on God to move because we are your move in this earth. We are arising as the bridal army. Listen to the sound of our marching and all of hell is terrified at the body of Christ rising up in this appointed Kairos hour. the window let your glory come down let the fire fall let the wind blow let your glory come down let the fire fall let the wind blow let your glory come down let the fire fall let the wind blow let your glory come down let the fire fall let the wind blow let your glory come down
We're not going to interrupt what the Spirit's doing, but... Oh! We're going to continue to worship, but prepare your hearts for offering. And what I saw in this offering today was I saw fire. And I thought, Lord, should we skip the offering? I actually thought, should we skip? He said, no. He said, because the seed that goes in today is going to start a revival fire. If you just have a penny to sow in to the atmosphere of revival and not the atmosphere of fear, it is a weapon of war today. This is war. So whatever you all want to play, if you want to do your song, holy, whatever, because this is holy, whatever you want. But we're going to, we're doing the offering. This is war. Ushers, come forward. We have a basket up here if you want to just throw it in the basket. We're also going to have baskets for Bill. This is for a gateway. Father God, we thank you. This is holy ground. This is fire day. And Lord, we take the seed and we sow it into the atmosphere of revival, into the atmosphere of fire, into the atmosphere of faith, and into the harvest, Lord. We declare returns in harvest. In Jesus' name, ushers, go ahead. Showers of mercy and grace. 
I began to hear the wind. And it was a really strong wind. And then I saw it was the whirlwind when Elijah was taken up into the heavenlies and the whirlwind. But then as Elijah was going, was going up, remember he threw down his mantle and Elijah caught the mantles. So it's mantles that are coming down and it's mantles for this season of the double portion anointing of Elijah. And with that mantle, the next thing he did is he hit the ground and the water dried up and they crossed over into this next season. Oboto asibo kokai nikabara sisi ishara mon kopa yekero mon kota hi kelo mon ho anikai te moksho nakena kota masi kala maho hi kemo kota nasi abishi kebakai makobo ho na hi nake baho anika albala bala sika shiki maho manike ni Yehe te mosobo, mama kota baishi kia, na te shi boko mahi nala ke, e ke o moho ai te sa, se to mo le kika shumani na te, bale ko ho ma ike anike mo shoka i te, kato maki a me te mo saki, bo shakane kikia. Que poco la bashini que cae. E toma na kilo poco cae. Shada bakina hatai. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here's the interpretation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be anxious for nothing. Speak to me of love, not of concern or worry. Behold, my ear is pressed to your lips. I want to hear your gratitude, your love, your affection, your awareness of the fullness of my grace and mercy that is already showered upon you. There is more. The groom is speaking to the bride, and he wants to hear from her the love that has already been brought into an existence that we can hardly comprehend, only to know that Christ our Savior has washed away all other, all others. And God alone is our salvation. Christ is our salvation. And he, he needs to know that you know the privilege of his love and you share that privilege back to him. So during worship, when we started singing, Make Me a House of Prayer, God showed me there was a little cloud. Out of the little cloud, as we started worshiping, there was a, a, a jet stream trail that started going up. As we were singing, the trail, instead of getting smaller, got bigger. And it was like, as we pray and worship God, he is sending out missiles of his glory, of his love. And it doesn't matter if our aim is true, because it went through another cloud where he sanctifies our prayers and our worship and redirects it. And it started to kind of spread out as it was going. And it was just, it was such a beautiful picture of what the prayer Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. the apostle that you brought to us.
we're not only expecting the fire, but we're expecting the rain. to stay up there. Nobody has to I was going to say, uh, I'm a bit still undone. Um, so this is going to be good. All right. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Uh, we've got people on the pulpit. We've got to wait got around to a here. Let's see. He, we got this. We can use you that. You want to table work for you? Right. You can't get up either. Is this your pulpit today? <laughs> Music stand, we'll take it. Oh, don't, don't get up till the Lord's finished doing what He wants to do in you, man. Don't get up. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Okay, well, I want to just to say, uh, you should have been there last night. We had a blast. You know, I'm up there. You are, Rabbi. Good. I will do that one again later sometime. Rabbi, come on up here. Most of you know Rabbi Pastor Stu. He and Millie, he and Millie uh, are, the, are, the, are the pastors and the, and the rabbi over this congregation or Haim that meets here on Saturday. They're our friends, but uh, he's the one who is telling me about the story, about really what true revival looks like. We were at land, we were at dinner that night. And so I would ask you to do this. Share, share what true revival looks like. So we can, we, you know, uh, that word revival, has been cheapened. Yes. Said so we're going to have a revival next week, and then we're going to have a revival after that next week, and it hasn't lost the fullness of what God meant for it. As you were talking last night, the Lord was doing so many different things in us. I was just wanting to stay in the back. And then Mary, she got. She, <laughs> thank you, Mary. You and David, thank you for allowing that for last night. It was an awesome time. The Lord came up there and began to do a, a deep thing, uh, began to do a great deep thing uh, up there with us. But you saw it firsthand. You tell us where it was, the setting, if you would. If you, you do it. Uh, don't, you know, Rabbi, I know how you are. You're a preacher. And keep it short. Keep it short, yeah. With a couple hours. Is that where a couple hours? Is that keep it short? Okay. Tell us all what, that, what you saw and what it looks like. Well, first of all, it, it kind of starts by looking like this. That's good. But um, this is years ago. It was actually in the late 1980s. And so when I hear the word revival, and we, all, we hear it a lot, I have a, I have a context. I have a, a grid that I kind of, and I was down in South America with my pastor at the time. This is before I went into ministry. I was saved only a few years. And and uh, we went down there, and we were in Cordoba and Mendoza, Argentina. And there was a man named Carlos Anacondia. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of him. We would, we were with these these people, and they would say, "Hey, there's some meetings happening over here in this this empty field." And every night, about eight or nine o'clock, thousands and thousands of people would gather there, and. He would preach a simple message of salvation and healing. People would get saved. People would be delivered. There was a deliverance tent there. And that was, that was exciting. And people, you know, testimonies of healing that actually would bring people up. But the, the, the revival part was when you would be walking, we'd be walking into the city after the service. 11 or 12 at night and we're Westerners, you know, they're, hell, okay, we're going to go to dinner now, you know, and of course in Argentina you have this steaks and things. So we're walking through the town, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, going into a restaurant. People would come up and say, tell us about Jesus. Tell us about Jesus. I need healing for this. I need healing for that. And people would get saved. You go into the restaurant and that's all that people were talking about. And 
the atmosphere in the, in the town, in the city was changed. And so that's my grid of revival. And I know that when we leave this mountain and we go down to wherever we go down to, or maybe we stay in this mountain, we bring that, that excitement, that atmosphere of what the king is doing. And we want to see it in a regional. We want to see it in a national. We want to see it in Israel. I want to see it in Israel. And so this is what my desire to see revival happening. Is, is that short enough, That's brother? Good. Okay. Thank you. Did you say what you wanted to say? Anything else? Anything else? Okay. So I really believe even, even with all this stuff going I'm a preacher. Even with all this stuff going on, this emergency that we're in, this God will use this. If we, the word was, if we, you know, the groom is speaking to his bride and, and listen to what he is saying and, and just rise up and be bold and enter into that place of his presence and God's going to do it. Amen. Amen. I'm done good. Now. Very good. Right. You, you sure? Okay. You know, so. Um, you didn't ask me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 